Hello, this is Katie from Vintage and Vinyl. I'll be spinning some rockin' 50s records every week here on my channel, as well as sharing some cool Coca-Cola collectibles and other neat vintage finds. Stay tuned. Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl, back with another great video for you today. In this video, we are talking all things glass, and this is the part two of the mini series I've been doing here on my channel all about vintage glass. I have selected some beautiful pieces today and I can't wait to share them with you. So let's go ahead and jump into this video. So the first glassware company we're gonna talk about is Payton City Glass. Now they're located in West Virginia, just like a lot of the other great glass companies of their time. They started in 1916 and they ended unfortunately in 1951 because they just couldn't keep up with the automation that was happening in other factories and they made molded and blown glass. Now what I want to share with you today is a really beautiful piece of depression glass. It is in the emerald glow line and specifically the star pattern and it's this really beautiful green glass bowl with these etched uh, starburst inside. Uh, the glass here, you can see that etched starburst pattern going around, or as they would say, star pattern. But I do think that they're starbursts. And it has this great um, brass handle with the Bakelite top here. It's just really, really lovely. And check out the detail work on these um, handles here. Aren't they lovely? So one way to tell something's Bakelite is just by rubbing it. So we're going to rub this handle and then give it a big old sniff. Yep, that's Bakelite. There is no mistaking it. It has that Bakelite smell. I don't know why this works, but it does. And so if you ever run into something and you're not sure if it's Bakelite, just give it a rub and give it a sniff. And that works out very well. But this is a beautiful piece of depression glass. And it is in the Emerald Glow line and specifically the star pattern. And it was made in 1940. Now I looked this up online because I was just sort of curious what it might be going for. Uh, in present times and the current market value is sort of all over the place. One bowl like this goes for $74, but then the salt and pepper shakers with the Bakelite handle go for a whopping $240. I cannot believe that. That was what one of the eBay listings had. So this pattern, I don't know if it's rare or not. They made a variety of little dishes, including a relish dish, and other, other things you can pick up like the salt and pepper shakers. I don't know if it's rare. I know the company had a short run um, and so maybe that has something to do with it. And of course it has the Bakelite top, which is very unique. You don't see a lot of glass with that feature. So I think that's kind of neat. And I love, love, love that piece. I am a sucker for etched starbursts in glass. For some reason, I'm just attracted to it. I think it's very cool. Now you should know that these pieces were marked with a foil sticker, but they're not marked now because a lot of people took off the foil sticker. So you might get lucky and find one with an original foil sticker on the bottom, but most likely you're just gonna have to recognize the pattern and do some research when you get it. Hopefully you guys can find some of these uh, green glow bowls at the uh, thrift stores or antique stores because they're so beautiful. And I have this in my bathroom and I really love it with all of my green glass in there. It's just stunning. So the next piece of glass we're going to talk about is not a glassware company. It's just the region of where this particular glass was made. And it's made in Italy on the west side. So it's not, um, it's, it's not the normal Italian glass you would see. It's not Murano glass at all. It's Empoli glass, and this is an Empoli cordial glass. Now I showed this in my I Love Thrifting video, and I said I don't know what it is, but I did a little bit more digging, and I did finally find it. There was a guy that had a set of these uh, with the original stickers uh, listed on a uh, line. He had seven of the cordial glasses and then the big decanter going for $170. Now my guess it was probably that expensive because it is made in Italy and Italy glass, especially Murano glass carries a high price tag. But this is a really, really beautiful piece. I paid a dollar for it and I love that gold overlay with the uh, grapes. I'm again attracted to grapes. I think they're beautiful, especially on glass. 
Now also, you know, you have to be careful with this gold overlay because it will come off. These pieces are not dishwasher safe. Even soap can, can rub this off. So you want to just use a nice soft cloth when dusting it. I probably wouldn't drink out of this. I mean, if you do, then I would be careful when you clean it, you know, just to make sure that you're not taking off any of that overlay. But it is very beautiful. Now, Empoli glass was made between 1950 and 1960, and it was imported into the U.S., and they made a pattern, which was their sort of main color scheme, and it was called Empoli Verde, which is what we would call Empoli Green. So this is sort of the standard color for these uh, glassware pieces. And I don't know what all they made. Obviously, they had these cordial glasses and the decanter, but I can't find anything else on them in any of my glassware books or online, but they are a very neat, beautiful piece of glassware. Now, the next company we're gonna talk about is Hazel Atlas, good old Hazel Atlas, and they were founded in, nine, in 1885 in Wheeling, West Virginia. Now, they were originally the Hazel Glass Company, and then in 1902, they were renamed to Hazel Atlas, which is what we know them by now. Now, if you have a Milk of Magnesia bottle, most likely it was made by Hazel Atlas. They made snuff bottles, lampshades, oil jars, pickle jars, shoe polish jars, ketchup, and jam jars. You name it, they made it. Just a really wide variety of things. Now, they did make uh, kitchenware, and that really is what made them a household name. And what I'm about to show you was made between 1930 and 1950, and it is the iconic crisscross pattern. And this is very, very Hazel Atlas. It is one of their crisscross fridge dishes. I have the large one here. They did make a medium one and a small one in a variety of colors. You could get this in blue, green, pink, or clear. And I love, love, love the crisscross pattern. It is so beautiful. It reminds me of those um, great outdoor tablecloths, the picnic tablecloths. It kind of has that picnic pattern to me, but it's just beautiful. Now, these are not marked Hazel Atlas on the bottom, but most things are. It has the H and the A, not to be confused with Anchor Hawking and all. They're completely different. Uh, logo anchor hawking has the little anchor, but I do know a lot of people do kind of get that backwards But this is a beautiful pattern and I hope I can collect more of it in the future uh, This is the fridge dish as I mentioned or if you're in the pyrex community You can call it a fridgy which is I think a very cute term But I love this dish and I just keep it in my kitchen and put little odds and ends in it I don't use it in the fridge like it was intended so again, you guys can get very creative with what you do with these pieces when you find it. Now, Trusty Huckster Mercantile did get a set of the bowls in the crisscross pattern. Unfortunately, one was broken due to shipping. You can go watch that video on his channel. But I really hope to find some of the bowls because I think that would be great, especially the little bowl. I would love that. So the next glass company we're going to talk about is another iconic glass company, and this is Faustoria. They were founded in 1887 in, of course, Faustoria, Ohio. They were bought by the Lancaster Colony Company in 1983, and they made pressed, hand-molded, and blown glass. And what I have to share with you is a Faustoria pattern that's very, very popular, and it is the Americana pattern, and this is a footed uh, candy dish here with a beautiful pedestal. Uh, not footed, I don't know why I said that, but it's got the pedestal on the bottom. And it has this great uh, pattern here. It's uh, sort of a triangular pattern that's indented. And it's just really, really lovely. And you can find this pattern online. It is not hard to get. Of course, you know, the more of it you have, the better off you will do selling it because sets of this does go for some money but i love this this is just a pressed piece of glass you can see the uh, seam right there and i love 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 this and it's in clear now i know clear is probably not the most collectible color but i love clear because you can kind of mix it in with some of your other glass colors and it just blends right in and again you can be creative with this i keep drops that i need um, in there in my bathroom and it works really well to create some height 
uh, in my glassware display. And of course, my grandmother got this for her wedding. So that's very special to me that it was hers. I don't even think she ever used it because it was still in the box when I got it. But I think that it's really, really spectacular. The next piece of Faustoria is a amber fluted vase. And it has this uh, coin pattern going around the outside. Now they did make these in a variety of colors. I think there was amber, clear, blue, purple, and red. I don't think there was green, but maybe you could get green. And each of the coins are different. So there's the iconic Liberty Bell. And then this is the 1887 American Eagle is what the little coin says. And then it has the Freedom Torch. That's what I would say. I think it's called the Freedom Torch. And this is a really beautiful amber piece of glass. I just love it. And they do make other things. So I have a candy dish I'll show in another video. And they do make salt and pepper shakers and a variety of different things with the coin uh, motif on it. And that is a very, very collectible pattern. So that's it for Faustoria in this video. But we will be talking a little bit more about it in a future video. So definitely stay tuned for that. Now the next company we're going to talk about is New Martinsville. And they opened up in 1901 in Martinsville, West Virginia. They made tableware, colored glass, barware, and lamps. Now what's interesting about them is in 1920, they continued to make their barware during the Prohibition and they advertised frequently. So I find that very, very funny that uh, they were advertising barware during the Prohibition. Of course, we all know about speakeasy, so I'm sure they had no problem selling their glasses, but I find that just hilarious. So they were renamed the Viking Glass Company in 1944. And in 1986, they were renamed the Geisel Viking Company. Now, I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly. And then sadly, in 1990, they did close. But the pattern I have here is the Prelude pattern. And it is a very, very beautiful etched piece of glass. It has these uh, flowers going around the outside. And then I think fern, these are fern leaves. But I love, love, love this little dish. And the handles are just so stunning. And this is a very classic handle on most of the prelude pieces. You will see this style of handle here. This is a relish dish. Uh, or you could probably put nuts in it. But it's just one of those divided dishes. And this, again, belonged to my grandmother. So it's extra special. Now, the funny story about this is for years she said, this is Faustoria. And when I got it, I thought it was Faustoria too, because a lot of the patterns with these flowers look very, very similar. And then a few weeks ago, I was actually looking this, uh, looking up glassware online, and I saw someone selling uh, something with this pattern on it. And I said, huh, they're listing it as New Martinsville. Maybe this isn't Faustoria. And I did some more digging, and sure enough, it was New Martinsville, not Faustoria. And I thought it was Faustoria for all these years. So that's kind of funny. But I love, love, love this dish. Now, the next company we're going to talk about is Federal Glass Company. They were in Columbus, Ohio, and they started in the 1990s. And then, of course, in 1958, they became a division of the Federal Paper Board Company. And then in 1979, they closed. Now, what I have to share with you is a really great uh, Federal Glass candy scoop. This is in a kind of an amber yellow color. And you can see the federal logo down there. It's just a, a F inside of a shield. And then there's a seam here. So I, I think this is uh, pressed glass. It's just a lovely little candy scoop. Now, if you don't know, they would use these for penny candy. And you would scoop the penny candy and then take it to be weighed because that's how they would price it. Now, a lot of people online list it as a shot glass, and this is not a shot glass at all. It's actually for penny candy. So if you see one of these, pick these up. They're just really, really cute. I'm sorry, trusty huckster mercantile. I beat you out in the auction for this, but I love, love, love this little candy scoop. It looks great next to my yellow planter's peanut jar. Well, it looks like that is all the glass that I have to share with you today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had fun sharing all my different collections 
uh, and companies of glass wear with you. Please leave a comment down below what your favorite piece was and give this a big old thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next video. So for now, stay safe, stay in, and binge YouTube.